This video was created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pekani, Sutina, and the Yarhi Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Hi, welcome back to Art with Raspo. It's National Truth and Reconciliation Day in Canada today, and I am at the historic Bariou Ranch in Southern Alberta. I'm standing at uh, Pekisco Creek. You can see there's a beaver dam here. Uh, we have a special uh, guest that we're going to paint today, who is the beaver. So today, let's paint a beaver. Okay, here are a few things that you're gonna be needing today uh, to uh, draw and paint the beaver. Okay, we've got, uh, I've got watercolor paper. It comes in a block here. You can get this at an art supply store. It's very important that it's watercolor paper because uh, other paper that you use, regular paper, is gonna bubble and warp and it's not much fun. Um, the other thing, I've got a uh, charcoal pencil. You can use a regular pencil if you want. I've got three different uh, sizes of brushes. This one's for fine details. This one's for big areas. It's important that the, the uh, watercolor brush can hold some water. Also, uh, I like to use a kneaded eraser because I like to uh, put it in the shape of whatever bean we're going to be doing today. It's the beaver. So I've got uh, the beaver ready to uh, make any changes to the drawing. And I've also got a uh, watercolor palette. You can get these at a uh, local art supply store or a dollar store even. They're very inexpensive. And finally, you need a container to uh, hold a lot of water. I would recommend using an empty yogurt cup. You could use a, a coffee mug or something like that. And uh, finally, I've got a piece of Kleenex. This is to dab up any spills that you might have while you're working on your watercolor. So uh, let's paint and draw a beaver. Okay, so this picture that we're working from today, it was taken by a uh, Calgary photographer by the name of Chuck Smurlow. And uh, I think that he took this picture at Carburn Pond in, in Calgary. And uh, just a great, uh, <clears throat> great photo we're going to work from. And uh, we're going to start off, as usual, we're going to kind of look at the, uh, the uh, big shapes first. So we've kind of got the beaver's head is like, uh, kind of like a, almost an oval here. And you can see his, um, the important thing in this uh, drawing or painting is going to be, the focal point is going to be on the beaver's hand. And the beaver's face. It's kind of a portrait of a, of a beaver today. And we can see its ears back here. And boy, the, uh, the beaver's got a very, very small eye. I didn't realize how small its eyes are. I like the expression of of this uh, this beaver's uh, face. It looks like that it's uh, pretty relaxed and it's just checking checking out the the viewer, the photographer. We've got kind of 
Again, the big shapes, the body's going to kind of go back here. I think that I'm probably going to put this, uh, these plants back here. I believe that this, these are probably, uh, uh, they look like willow trees down by a pond. Some of the uh, beaver's favorite food. Something else that I I noticed lately when I was fishing with my friend Ken is that uh, we were fishing and uh, by surprise, probably the biggest beaver I've ever seen in my life uh, actually walked up to us, passed to us to get to the uh, Bow River in Calgary where we were fishing and uh, it had a, uh, it looked like it was carrying a bouquet of uh, clover in its mouth. And uh, my friend Ken told me they really love to eat uh, clover. It might be fun to, to draw these uh, or paint these um, this willow and <clears throat> the grasses and whatnot around the, the beaver here. I went for a walk recently with uh, my wife and uh, the beavers not too far from our house here. They, they can take down a huge tree very, very quickly. Their teeth are always growing. They always need to be using them. They're very, very busy. I also uh, recently was out at the Bayou Ranch. It's uh, close to where I live. And uh, it was Orange Shirt Day. And <clears throat> I saw my friends, uh, Travis and uh, Renine Ryder. Travis, Jimmy, John, Renine Ryder. And uh, I asked them about the significance of the beaver to them in their culture, which is uh, Yiska Nakoda. So this is what they had to say. Well, its name is um, Chaba in Stony, And I know um, my mom used to say, because of how hard, fast workers and hard workers they are, they used to tell us when you have babies, when you have newborns, if you want your baby to be successful and independent, they used to tell us to cut the, was it the arms? Yeah, the, the, the leaf, the there's um. What do you call the vein or what is it called? There's a piece, kafa, that they kaffa. you cut out mm -hmm. yes. and you put it on your kids and tie it onto them. Tendons. The tendons oh. of the beaver. Till they grow, till it falls off on its own. Till they're probably in their teenagers, they'll fall off. And when they, when that happens, they'll be good with their hands. Yeah. Uh, in Nakoda and Yiska, we call the beaver Chaba. 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 <laughs> wow, that was amazing. So now you know uh, that the beaver's very busy with its uh, hands and how important it is. Uh, for you to be busy with your hands like you are right now. Okay, hey, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this part is uh, when we do the real large areas of the uh, of the uh, beaver and its surroundings. I'm just going to get a little bit of brown in there. That's kind of the color, and it mixes nicely, like what I said about uh, the um, with the uh, charcoal 
kind of uh, blends it a little bit. Remember, if it gets away on you, you can always uh, dab it with some. Uh, you can always dab it with some uh, of your Kleenex. Kind of a little bit to yellowish in here. Kind of look at the colors, see what you see. There's even a, kind of a blue in here too, bluey gray. If you want to use that Kleenex, you can go in there and where it's lighter. And then we're going to forget about the beaver for just a minute and we're going to look at uh, around it. Um, up here you can see there's some blue. Oops. Have that paper towel. When you're doing the big stuff, have that, uh, <clears throat> not paper towel, uh, Kleenex close by so that you can, if you need to dab, dab it up. Things you, that you don't want. When it comes to the background I let my students I uh, just say you know what you put any background in there you want you have the artistic license to change things up I just encourage them to uh, try and make things look natural like the beaver would uh, would like it uh, <clears throat> to be I wouldn't necessarily like one student always puts a top hat on uh, all of the beans that we paint and draw and try and make it look uh, natural I guess is the word natural and accurate is is kind of uh, and have fun when you're doing it you know like Bob Ross says uh, the painter there says uh, the happy accidents this is where a lot of the happy accidents come where you get all these interesting little little uh, pools of I'll call them pools of happiness where they just things blend together really in a way that you hadn't uh, thought of and uh, that it's going to give you some kind of new effects that they're kind of impossible to duplicate by anybody else if if they were trying to copy your work because they're just spontaneous and a little bit wild. So, yeah, don't be afraid to go a little bit wild here with the brush. If you get too wild, then uh, people aren't going to know what you're painting. So, you do have to have some, some restraint. Restraint means, you know, a bit more control.
Okay, so I've given this uh, a little bit of a chance to dry and uh, right now would be a good time to go back into it with your uh, pencil or your charcoal pencil and kind of redo the, um, the lines or the map so that uh, you can really see um, the proper structure of what we're we're going to paint and um, it's just going to you're going to be happier with the result if we uh, figure out where things are again with the uh, you can see where the beaver's whiskers go here Okay, so we've done a bit of drawing here and uh, we can start uh, or continue painting things, areas that we see that uh, we can uh, add to. You can mix some uh, white with your paint here. Let it uh, just kind of bleed into what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to put some finishing touches on uh, the beaver's fur now and uh, as I've mentioned in other videos sometimes uh, your watercolor palette that you get it will have uh, white paint which works well if you want to uh, get a little bit better result or more to what uh, I'm doing here um, you can purchase yourself some of this it's uh, white gouache. It says designer's gouache. It's a little bit thicker than watercolor paint and you can mix this with your watercolor paints and you can uh, get a, uh, a nice effect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Kleenex for uh, 
setting it down wherever I'm going to uh, paint so that I don't smear the um, charcoal work, that drawing work that I've done uh, carefully. So I'm just going to mix up some yellow, yellowish, actually on the beaver's, uh, top of the beaver's head there, he's got, or she has got, um, it's, there's some real white uh, highlights there. So we can put those in. We can just zip those in and they're going to make uh, the beaver's uh, nose here really, uh, really pop out against the, uh, the background. And... You know, it's been uh, very interesting the past uh, couple days while I've been working on this uh, video. Uh, my friend, Mr. Carey, the principal, um, that I did the Badger uh, video with for his school, Big Rock School, he asked me uh, if I wanted to go to keep teacher's convention uh, this year with him. And... Uh, I'm still a teacher, so I can go to these things. And uh, the speaker there was, uh, her name was uh, Phyllis uh, Webstat. And um, what I didn't realize is that uh, that orange shirt that I'm wearing at the beginning of the video uh, for Orange Shirt Day, she is the one that, uh, that came up with the idea of... Uh, orange shirt day and uh, that could be a whole other video in itself uh, you learning about orange shirt day and what it means and what truth and reconciliation is and all those things um, just it was just absolutely uh, fantastic and uh, what she has been doing and and um, um, teaching people about uh, Canada's history with the residential schools and, and whatnot is just uh, so courageous and so uh, inspirational what uh, she's bringing to light, which is a very sad uh, part of our, uh, if uh, for the Canadian viewers, us, it's a very sad part of our history, but it's one that we need to uh, work through uh, together like a family works through things. Your family works through some uh, sad things. So as a group, um, we all need to to uh, to work through it together. So anyway, that was a, quite amazing, quite amazing yesterday. <clears throat> you can see this, uh, I'm adding some kind of bluey white, a little bit of blue to the, to the white for the uh, fur on the beaver's head here. Okay, so it's the uh, second month, uh, well, it's the 24th day 
of February, which is the second month, 2024. I'm going to go by uh, what Mr. Jimmy John said in his uh, Ithka Nakoda language, what the beaver is called, and uh, he said it's Chaba. So that's what we're going to write. Chaba. Sign off here. And that was a lot of fun. Thank you.